out there in YouTube land, this is Jan, and today I'm going to be coming at you with another movie review. And today's movie review is from 2005, and this is kind of a very uh, divisive film, and I never knew until I started doing research. And the movie I am talking about, like I said, it's from 2005, it stars Ellen Page and Patrick Wilson, and um, they're pretty much, they, there's a couple of other bit players in this movie, but they're basically the two that carry this whole film all the way through the movie. And the movie I'm talking about, of course, is Hard Candy. Hey there, little red riding hood. You sure are looking good. You're everything a big bad wolf could want. One of my biggest positives for this movie is ambiguity. Um, you, it, it, this movie shows you things, but it, later on, it, it, it's not exactly what you're seeing isn't exactly what you're seeing, if you will. Um, and, and it really works really well. Another one of my biggest praises is um, this This movie kind of reminds me of an old Br'er Rabbit tale because um, our actual, our actual, um, our actual two characters, we think it's going to go one way and then about 15 minutes into the movie it completely flips it and it's not the, uh, it's not, uh, it's not the gentleman, it's not our 32 year old photographer friend that that is the, uh, that is the, that is the, that is the predator in this movie. It's the innocent, sweet little innocent 14 year old girl. And I really like how they play with your expectations. That was a really smart move. Also the performances, and this might sound like a weird phrase, but Patrick Wilson plays our 32 year old, uh, photography pedophile gentleman. And he just, he just knocks it out of the park and he plays a really great pedophile. He does it very convincingly. You buy it from him. And the most creepiest thing about his performance is he does bring some likability into his performance. You know, if he wasn't a pedophile, you would kind of like this guy. And I, I think the movie does that intentionally. Whereas Ellen Page's character of, of Haley, um, there's a lot of people in reviews that I've seen that said they didn't particularly like her. They thought she was too preachy and, um, and, and, and she wasn't likable at all. And she did much worse things than what our pedophile is doing, which again just totally boggles my mind. Um, and, but she actually turns the tables on this pedophile and she sets him up. She learns everything about him and you, she has a reason for setting him up. She has a reason for it. Or at least you think that the movie never says one way or the other, but you at least think she has a reason for setting him up. And um, she, they're chatting online and they finally agree to meet at a coffee shop. And, um, you know, and, and, and it's a very uncomfortable scene when he's at the uh, coffee shop because he's wooing her and he's getting inside her head, or at least he thinks he's getting inside her head, and telling her, you know, she looks a lot older than 14, she's, she doesn't act like a 14, she's very smart. I mean, telling her things that, you know, any woman of any age would love to hear, and he's wooing her, and it would be a sweet scene until you remember, oh yeah, she's 14, he's 32, and then it just goes into complete creepsville, and um, he's just very charming and he thinks he's leading her um, leading her to the character so to speak and, and, and lets it think it's her idea to actually want to go back to his house where there's no witnesses and it's it, it, it and he and you know watching this film you think oh he's got her and he that's what he's thinking and um and that's not exactly actually it's she's Br'er Rabbit and she's going oh please oh please don't throw me into that briar patch there please please that'd be the horrible thing and she kind of and she's very much Lolita Ellen Page kind of reminds me at least in these first 15 minutes reminds me very much of Lolita and just very flirty and and, and says some kind of you know um, innuendo and um, everything like that and she blushes at certain times and I mean it's a hell of a good performance um, but she reminds me very much of Lolita and of course but but she does but she's leading him and she says well I uh, they talk about Goldfrap uh, uh, which was a band and uh, he was talking about how he has this collection and that he actually photographed him and she goes I would really love to hear the one single you have and he says I'll email it to you and she she kind of talks his way into just, well, I could just come to your house and listen to your, your house. And um, again, she's leading, she's making him throw him in into the briar pratt. She thinks she's the, uh, he thinks he's the one in the driver's seat and really it's Ellen Page the whole time. And um, he, he reluctantly but does agree to take her to his house. And then before they go to his house, we get this very, and maybe it's just because I'm not into the whole foot fetish thing anyway, I've never got the whole foot fetish thing, but before they actually go to his house, we... Well, face of logic like that, I bow down and worship. Bow down? 
That's a good idea. What are you waiting for? Worship me. <laughs> yes, O oh royal Fong girl. I'm not worthy to kiss your feet. Maybe you are. For a lack of a better term, this scene just kind of, oh God. Like, even if, 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 if these two characters were the same age, they were both in their 30s, this would still just creep me out. It's just, but, but adding the whole, you know, 32 to 14 age range in this, this just, ugh. I don't like this scene and it's just creepy, creepy, creepy. Um, so there, we have that scene. And um, if this were a normal pedophile story, you would think, oh boy, this is not going to end really in good results. And um, of course, he offers uh, he offers uh, her drinks uh, to make screw screwdrivers. And um, she, there's a scene in the movie where she actually says, um, oh, and he goes, well, what's wrong? And he goes, well, we're at, they actually teach us young things in school never to drink anything that we haven't mixed ourselves because somebody could slip it in. And he goes, oh, that's really smart. He goes, I'll go make you a fresh drink. You can watch me. And she goes, oh, no, I have a better idea. And she, she goes, I'm, I can make a mean screwdriver. And she proceeds to mix the drinks. And, and she actually slips something into his drink, which we find out very shortly later on and she starts fooling with his uh, uh, photography equipment and talks about you know you you see all these models and he goes yes but I've never done anything inappropriate with them because you know it could be get me landed me in jail and um, she's really you know she's really just flirty and she goes well you should take the picture of me and um, and then we see, start to see his, his words are starting to slur here and we can see that whatever she gave him is starting to take effect and he screams at her to just settle down because she's, she's trying to get him to take her photographs and kind of jumping around, has loud music. And he just says, uh, sit down. And um, then he goes, I don't feel very well. And that then he is knocked out. And we, we see that things aren't as what they appear to be. So anyway, uh, so so our pedophile is 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 uh, bound and gagged into this chair. He's waking up, and um, and he's groggy, and 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 uh, presumably from these drugs, from what I've read about it, you kind of don't know what's going on. You're there, but you're not there, and he's you know you're groggy to your surroundings, and he's looking around and trying to figure out what's going on. And again, another really creepy scene is when he says this line right here. <coughs> Why do I get tied up first if, if this is how we're going to play? He actually thinks, guys, that, um, that, that, uh, that, that, that this is some fun little kinky game she's doing and, and, and he doesn't understand why she isn't the one tied up. That, and, uh, and, and when Haley says, well, playtime's over, Jeff, that's when it finally dawns on him that things aren't going to go like the playbook, always, the playbook has always gone before. And um, again, it, it, that again just shows his character right there that, 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 you know, he actually thought that this was just some sort of kinky little fun sex game with a 14 year old instead of, oh, she's tying me up. And like I said, we also discover why Haley is doing what she's doing, or at least in partly why she's doing what she's doing. At the beginning of this uh, film, when they're at the coffee shop, uh, right above their heads, there's this kind of pegboard thing over their heads, and they had this big old missing poster over, over their heads, uh, and it says Donna Mills. And, um, and that, that's why Haley is, because, the, um, because that's, that's that, uh, this character, Jeff, uh, he was the last one to talk to her friend Donna, and you you get the feeling that 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 Donna must have been a, a very close friend of Haley's, and that's why she's doing what she's doing, and um and and and, and uh she see and she she tells Jeff at one point point have you seen her Jeff because nobody else sure as have, and um and 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 and, and she and this is where we get the whole speech of what 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 is really going on. And um, at first, Jeff denies it, that he denies that he's a pedophile or anything like that. 
But as we go on through the film, his, his, his rebuttals just become weaker and weaker and weaker. And Haley goes through, while he's tied up, Haley goes through his whole house because he, she goes, everybody has, you know, men in general all have, you know, a certain, you know, little goody, little goody thing to look at, you know, even non-pedophiles, you know, that's just men do and um and, and and she go but she knows that uh, pedophiles in particularly have to have some sort of momentum memento something to uh, remember their experiences by and like I said his whole house is set up with pictures that he's photography a uh, photographer of all the these beautiful women on his walls but she know there's more juicy things than that and this next scene is just basically where she goes through his whole house trying to find the, trying to get the evidence to prove to herself that yes he she, he's the right guy and that he's a pedophile and um, she's coming up empty-handed and she's getting very angry and flustered with herself and she's kind of tearing up his whole house, going through things, and she's just trying to find it because she knows it's there. And one of the things in this house, and it, it is a little unusual. I remember the first time I actually saw this movie, I thought, that's just kind of weird. Um, Jeff has this, like, rock garden in the middle of his living room. And um, she. this is at the point where Haley has torn the house, you know, from top to bottom looking for things. And then all of a sudden you kind of see this light go on over, this light bulb go on over her head. And she bends down, uh, scoops the rocks out of the way, and lo and behold, there is a safe deposit box in the uh, rock garden. And, you know, you think, well, if anyone actually uh, would keep anything, you know, that they didn't want anyone else to see it, that'd probably be a damn good place to keep, uh, keep stuff you don't want anyone else to see. And then we have another scene uh, where uh, she's trying to get the combination. And um, the combination, and this is one of the, this is one of the other really biggest flaws of the movie. I've heard, I have pretty much, even people who are really big fans of this movie say that this was a little bit contrived writing right here because, um, you know, she's going crazy trying to find the combination. She tries his birthday. She tries uh, every other sentimental date you can think of, and which isn't really that wrong. How many of us use a number that's significant in our lives? Not necessarily a birthday, but something that means something. To, and it's usually some sort of things of numbers. And so that's not real. I don't give the movie a lot of help for that. But what, what, what she finally figures out that the rest of the numbers are in his screen name. He's Lensman381, I believe. And um, she finally just, again, just much like finding this safe, it just sort of clicks in her head. And she tries that. And um, lo and behold, the safe opens. And then we get this next scene right here. This is what they make those federal laws for, Jeff. is officially sick. We don't ever see the pictures, and I like, that's another thing about this movie. This movie doesn't show, but it still, it lets you make the pictures up in your own mind. Not just of this scene, there's a couple of other scenes in the movie where they never show you anything, and it actually works better because we can make a lot more wicked stuff in our minds than they could ever put on celluloid. And, um, and, and, and but I love this, I love that line where she sees this is what we, uh, this is what those federal uh, laws were made for, Jeff. And, um, and, and she, and even Haley at this point, and you can tell Haley, she's a very bright girl, but she's probably a little unstable. And I know there's a lot of complaints with 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 with, with how Haley was writing, and and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but it, it's just a great scene, and even she's like, this is officially sick. And you, you just your mind goes, well, what the hell is on those pictures? And we never see. And we also see a picture of, of, of her friend Donna, fully clothed in front of a coffee shop. Um, but it's proof that he also knew her friend Donna, who is missing. And um, so Haley knows, you know, she was right on both accounts that she's a pedophile, that he's a pedophile, and that he probably had something to do with her friend's disappearance. And right now I'm going to talk about what I've heard another big complaint of this movie is that how could a possibly a 14-year-old not only overpower a big 32-year-old uh, guy and also how she could intellectually outpace, you know, this guy is really smart um, and, uh, and, and, uh, and how can she uh, uh, intellectually outpace him in, in the brains department. And I actually give the movie a pass on both of these accounts. How I do it with the intellectual department, do, do I think most 14 year olds could do what Haley's doing? Um, maybe, I don't know, but I think uh, the movie from the very beginning shows that this girl is super, super bright, like probably, you know, uh, maybe even Menza material. And um, I think if, uh, if a girl was bright enough, 
then yeah, she could probably do it. And she, and you guys got to remember, she has a damn good reason. And vengeance, you know, vengeance makes everything possible. They say it's love makes the world go around, and maybe it does. But I guarantee you, you, you know, sometimes our only motive, the best motivation is you just want to get at this some son of a bitch. And it doesn't even have to be this situation like in this movie. But revenge is a hell of a motivator, is what I'm saying, goose and ghouls. And um, if you want to get at somebody and just make sure they hurt and pay, even whatever you you have to do it in order to get at that son of a bitch. You'll do if you have enough good reasons. And I think uh, in the case of Haley's character, she's a combination of being bright enough and having a damn good reason and enough hatred and enough vengeance in her heart to make her be able to do what she needs to do. And as far as the, the physical part of it, how could she, because she has to get physical with him. She actually at one point in this movie has to drag his dead weight across uh, across this large house and people have said how could a and she's a little bitty thing she's she, she's real tiny and small small boned and um and she has this strength and what i say to that is it's adrenaline booze and ghouls adrenaline will make you do anything and some of us little girls um would would surprise you everyone always assumes that i'm very because i'm very short i'm i'm you guys probably can't tell on camera but i am super short if i stood up next to sparky i look like a little little child next to him and um but he'll he'll always tease me because I'm actually way stronger than him whenever we live on a farm and whenever there's something heavy lifting to be done it's always them that, that my Sparky and my mother will always come and get me because usually I'm the one that can do it um, so sometimes us little girls can surprise you plus adrenaline so both of those uh, both of those criticisms that, that I've heard a lot of people talk about um, I give passes to the movie with um, but now that Haley has her evidence against Jeff, and, and we know that whatever that was on those pictures, we don't see those pictures, but whatever was on those pictures, we know were pretty horrific. And, um, you know, we, we, you know by, the, by, by this point in the movie, if you, if you have any sympathy for Jeff whatsoever, I, I don't know what to tell you because he's in possession of kitty porn, and he has a picture of a missing girl, that, and he probably had something to do with her disappearance. And so, um, and, and, and he tries to talk and justify and, and gives him all the things that we've heard with, with some other real life cases of pedophiles and um, no sympathy. And Haley doesn't have any sympathy for him either. And Haley decides, and again, and this scene, especially for all you male viewers out there, probably is the most uncomfortable scene in the movie because she decides that she could call the police. And that's another um, uh, criticism I've heard that, you know, why wouldn't a 14-year-old girl, if she found out something like this, just call the police and let them handle it? And some 14-year-old girls would. I, I, I don't disagree that a lot would. But I think there's some of us out there who, who would think, you know, if it was your best friend that, that's murdered by this asshole, you know, you might just think, you know what, the cops might not do as good a job as what I have in store for you, you son of a bitch. And um, I don't know that I could have done it at that age. I'm not the brightest of the thing. I might have gone to the police. But if I had Haley's brain power, I probably would have thought, you know what, I'm going to handle this myself. You know, the, the poor police are overworked enough. If I can help out and do my civic duty, why not? Um, so, but, so she decides the best thing, instead of calling the police, is to castrate him. And um, she mentions... Uh, earlier in the movie that her father is a medical professor and she has borrowed some of his texts uh, from him and um, she she actually pulls out the, the uh, this big old thick medical book showing how to basically castrate somebody and she says don't worry Jeff this is the most easy operation uh, you can do uh, farm boys in Idaho can do it so can I and she numbs him um, she numbs him with ice and Jeff is pleading and saying you know you can call the cops you can do whatever um, and Haley's not, not, not buying it. He even at one point offers her money, which kind of, again, just shows what, what, what character, what caliber of character Jeff really has. And, um, she, she, she plays it out. She's mind-fucking, that's another thing I love about this movie. Haley is mind-fucking Jeff throughout this whole movie, and it really is poetic justice, at least in my eyes, because that's part of what a pedophile does too, is they get inside your head and fuck with you, and now the tables are turned and it's kind of sweet, if you want to know my take on it. But anyway, she's numbing it out, and she's tying him to the thing, and then she does the operation, or at least you think she's doing the operation. Um, and she says, oh, that's, that's so simple, that's so easy, you're going to feel a tug. And I know men who have watched this scene uh, find it very uncomfortable. I guess you guys are very, you know, no pun intended, you guys are attached to your man glands, so... <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, I, I, I guess, I guess seeing any guy getting castrated for another male is just like horrifying. And, um, and she makes him, and, and, and it's a very simple, she keeps saying, oh, this is, this is nothing. This is a simple procedure. And, um, then she, uh, says, you know, in about seven or eight days, I take the stitches out because this isn't something you want to go to your family doctor about. And, um, you know, it, it's really great. And, um, she goes, you know, I'm sweating like a pig. Let me go take a shower. And, um, of course, this is an interesting scene. And, and this is, admittedly, this is where the writing is a little bit contrived because, um, she is, uh, she doesn't, she, she has a shower running, but she, she's not in the shower, funny thing. And Jeff is struggling with all these ropes, and he manages to free himself. And the first thing he does when he sits up is he checks his, uh, his, his, uh, his member, and he finds out that all of his equipment, for lack of a better term, is still there, and he keeps going, I'm all there, I'm all there, and, 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 and he's like just relieved, and he decides to go into the shower because he hears the shower running, and he has a knife, and he looks for it, and he goes into the bathroom and pulls the shower curtain, and you know, you think you're going to get a scene from Psycho, but instead, you see Haley coming up behind him with a cattle pro, I think it's a cattle, it's one of those uh, electrical things that you can, you know, uh, shock somebody with. Uh, I can't think of the day. I, it's not a cattle prod. Maybe it's a cattle prod. But anyway, uh, the, she comes up behind that and just, uh, uh, you know, basically electrocutes him. Not to kill him, but just to stun him. And I, I imagine it's even more painful because he falls into the bathtub with running water and she's just jabbing him with the thing. And again, anybody who has sympathy for Jeff, I don't know what to tell you guys because it's like, yeah, just get him one more time. <laughs> And uh, she proceeds to tie him up again, and we get another scene um, after Jeff wakes up, where Haley is, um, where, 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 where when Jeff wakes up, and Haley and Jeff talk a little bit more, and of course Jeff has to give this monologue about perhaps what made him become what he became, um, and he talks about this Aunt Denise story, where he went to visit his Aunt Denise one summer, and one of her pretty little daughters, I believe the little girl's name is Lenny, um, loved a Jeff, and Lenny was probably about four, and Jeff was ten at the time, and she would play this game where she would jump out naked out of a tub and say, prune monster, because she was all wrinkly, and it just goes into the story of how the aunt found them one day with the little girl on top of him naked, and, uh, and stuff, and how the aunt uh, made the little girl go back into the bathtub, picked up this 10-year-old boy, took him into the kitchen, turned on these burners, and held his penis and said that if she ever caught her with her daughter like that again, she'd burn it off, and that the next day she, he never saw uh, his aunt or his uh, cousin again. And um, and I love the look on uh, 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 the, the total emotionlessness of, of Haley's character because she goes, is that supposed to mean something, Jeff? You know, and she and she goes. You know, you you uh, you told that story very well. And um, you know, I, it's I guess it's some sort of insight into Jeff's psyche. But I'm sort of like Haley. I'm just very unmoved about it. If that is what made him become a pedophile or helped shape him to be a pedophile, um, I'm not very moved, dude. Um, and and Haley isn't either. And um, we also find out during the course of this movie that Jeff is was madly in love with one of his first models, and they were both they were both I guess teens at the time when when he took these shots, and he fell in love. And the girl's name is Janelle, and in the bedroom he has all these pictures of Janelle, and um, they're still he's sort of torturing himself like they'll get him back together. Uh, at one point when uh, Haley is tearing up Jeff's house, she finds these love letters from from Janelle saying that you know Jeff, I just can't go into the places you want to go. To. And um, she uses that against psychological warfare with Jeff, and she uh, decides that she's going to compose a letter to Janelle saying that, you know, she really likes Jeff, but she thinks that he still has some things for her, uh, still has like a, uh, 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 still is in love with Janelle, basically, and, um, and, and, and just does all these things to fuck with Jeff. She, he's going to, you know, she's going to email him because basically Jeff has been torturing himself, hoping that they're going to get back together one day. Again, just, this movie has a lot of psychological warfare. And um, basically, uh, what what happens with the rest of the movie is that uh, Haley says, "You know what? You've got two options. You can I can either uh, call the police, 
and everybody will know that you're a pedophile and your life will be ruined and um, and even Janelle will, fi will find out what kind of a monster you are or you can do the right thing and take your own life and she actually rigs up a contraption and, uh, and where she uh, where she puts Jeff on the kitchen counter and puts a rope around his neck and says you know I'm gonna I'm gonna we, we can end this now Jeff and no one will need to know about all your little little sick twisted things and um, we get, and then this is about the only other time where another character comes in. There is a knock at the door, and it is a neighbor, and she says, and she says that Jeff had, had gotten some Girl Scout cookies, kind of funny, from her daughter. Can you pay her? And Haley does, and um, and 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 it just basically this this is kind of contrived to cause, cause tension because Haley thought that nobody else was around and no one would ever be able to identify her, and now this neighbor knows that she was at this and she just says, oh, it's my Uncle Jeff, yada, yada. Um, but really, there's not any big uh, reason as to why this character's in there except to cause a little tension. And uh, the, the neighbor goes, can I ask you something really personal? And it turns out that she's just looking for another babysitter. But again, it, it, it's trying to, it's again playing with your expectations and you think it's going to go one way. It doesn't. This scene really doesn't go anywhere and all it is is therefore is to add a little high tension into the uh, into this drama as if we didn't need any before and then our last scene is basically where Haley says you, you know you've got two options uh, Jeff does break free again and they have kind of a cat and mouse game and we end it all up on the roof where Haley has already rigged up a rope and she said I called Janelle she's on her way um, and, she, and if you don't, if you don't kill yourself, I'm gonna run into Janelle's arms half naked and make it and, and let the world know what you are. Show them that your kitty porn pictures and the picture of my friend Donna who's missing. And um, and Jeff basically begs and pleads, and then he finally says, "Look, I didn't kill Donna, but I know who did. I'll I'll help you find him. We'll catch him together." And um. Again, this is this is one of the really the movies really this is the best scene in the whole movie where uh, where 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 Haley Haley goes I already know uh, who 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 was with you when uh, when when Donna was taken I know the other guy I know it was Aaron and um, he goes it was and, and and he goes well it wasn't me it was Aaron I just wanted to take pictures and even if if, if what Jeff is saying is true I mean he's still uh, an account uh, he's an accomplice to murder he didn't stop uh, a girl being murdered and wanting to take pictures of it that that line right there just just made me a uh, uh, cold uh, shiver run through my spine because he thinks that he, uh, Jeff thinks that he's being the good guy even just because he wasn't the one that actually murdered her and again this is very big on amb ambiguity we don't know Jeff could be lying to Haley and maybe it was Aaron the, uh, the accomplice we don't know the movie never says and uh, the ambiguity of this movie is actually a strength rather than a weakness as far as I can say um, but basically, uh, Haley, and Haley goes, I don't care which one of you killed her, you know, and, um, she's, and then we see this scene where this car coming up the driveway, and it is Janelle, and now Jeff has only one option of either killing himself or facing the music. Don't worry. I promise I'll, I'll take care of it all. <laughs> or not. Presumably Janelle's gonna find Jeff hanging hanging uh, by the roof and she's gonna find the pictures and all the evidence that that Jeff was, uh, you know, implicated in this murder, and he liked his kitty porn. And then we have our closing shot of um, of Haley in this little red um, hoodie. And the, the interesting thing about this, a lot of people took this as a nod to Red Riding Hood. And actually, in post, it was actually an orange hoodie. And for whatever reason, they changed it to a red hoodie. They they said they weren't doing any sort of nods to Little Red Riding Hood. That's just what people took it. They just thought the red 
looked better than the orange. And that we just see this sweet little girl with a book bag in a, in a red hood walking away from this horrific crime scene and movie. And that was uh, and that was hard candy, booze and ghouls. Um, I, um, I know a lot of people who who who, uh, who really don't like this movie, and I know a couple people who are not horror fans um, actually say it's pretty good. I actually had a really good friend say, "Wow, I really love that movie, Jen. It was really really good." And she was not a horror person at all. So this movie is very very divisive. Um, I can, I've heard some people because there are some scenes in this movie where they say that this. This is just like a slick MTV production uh, that's preachy. That's you know, and that, and that the Haley character is just preachy, and you know they're pushing an agenda. I don't think so. I actually think this is a very smart movie. I I, I think it's a cathartic movie because um, the predator is getting the tables turned and becoming the prey. And maybe it's not exactly a new idea, but it's done very confidently. The performances in this movie by uh, Ellen Page and uh, Patrick Wilson are worth the price of admission alone. Um, that both of them give a wonderful performance, particularly Patrick Wilson, because you you actually do almost kind of sort of like him, minus if he wasn't a pedophile. And I've actually heard people, and and when I see people uh, when they're talking about this, they get this very uncomfortable look on their face, where they will actually admit for like the briefest of seconds they do have some sympathy for this poor guy, this poor pedophile guy, and that's a genius of the movie and a genius of the actor. Now myself, I didn't have any sympathy for whatever. Uh, for any time of it, you know, the son of a bitch got what he deserved, and I hope he burns in hell, <laughs> um, basically. But I, I have known some people who said the most horrifying aspect of this movie was the fact that, that, that they did have some sympathy for Jeff. Um, it's a chilling movie, and the interesting thing about this Booze and Ghouls is it's also, this movie actually was supposed to have a twist where Jeff was innocent. They were going to change a few uh, scenes in the beginning of the movie, and they were actually going to have it where Haley got it wrong, and it turned out that Jeff wasn't a pedophile. And, um... Had they gone in that route, I still probably would have enjoyed the movie. But I think out of the two versions, this movie, the, the way they, 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 the, the finished one that we've actually seen, actually worked better. Um, but it would have been an interesting premise to see that Jeff was that, that Jeff was innocent, um, because you know you have the whole thing of, of the death penalty uh, kind of thing, you know, because people. People get accused of horrific things every day, and sometimes they turn out to be innocent, and they're already their punishment has already been served, and it's too late to take it back. So um, my mother is a big opponent to the death penalty, um, and I'm not. You know, I don't want any innocent person to ever die. But my answer to the people that are uh, that you know have sympathy for the death penalty is let it happen to someone you love, and see if you're so anti-death penalty. But that's just my own personal thoughts, booze and ghouls. Uh, can I recommend Hard Candy? Yes, I can. I think this is a great movie. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. I'm interested to, to hear uh, my viewers what you guys think. Do you guys like it? Do you have any sympathy for Jeff? Uh, do you feel sorry for a pedophile? Do you think I'm too, too hard on this film? Um, but I do, as always, I do love to hear your thoughts, but I think it's a very smart film. I do not think it's preachy. I just have a real problem that some people have sympathy for a pedophile. And this movie, when I was doing research for this film, I was just completely shocked um, because I thought most people's idea of this film was, or feelings toward this film was like mine. I thought, you know, for the majority of people felt the way I did. But when I was doing some deep research, oh my God, people, there are, there are people that really love this film, but there are people who despise this film. I was seeing people's, um, pe people uh, giving reviews on it uh, on Amazon, and oh my God, people do not like this movie. Um, some of the complaints complaints I've heard are morally repre re reprehensible um, 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 that this is just exploitative to be exploitative because uh, this film does deal with pedophilia and um, that they were just this was just a gimmick to make them um, to get people into the scene said that this is nothing but your by the numbers thriller and they just threw in pedophilia to get people into the seats and make it look more controversial than they did now mind you booze and ghouls these are not my opinions I'm just giving you kind of what other people out in the world think of this film and it really shocked me to be honest because I honestly felt that you know most people um, would not be offended the way they are this is an offensive movie but I didn't think people would be offended what they actually were offended about and one of the things they're most offended about is um, is is Ellen Page's performance. Not that she does a bad performance at all in this movie. She's absolutely 
wonderful, especially like when she played this character, she was 18 or 19 at the time. She's playing a 14 year old and she totally, you could, she looks at, in the movie, she does look like a 14 year old, you totally buy it, but she's about 18 in real life when she was making this movie. And this, particularly men, people do not like her character. They find, and they find her more, some reviews actually found her more reprehensible than a pedophile, which just boggles my mind, guys, because who in their right minds would ever be on the side of a pedophile? And I'm not being funny here. Like, like one of my favorite uh, reviews of this film, someone actually put in, this actually kind of made my head explode. Um, they said, child abuse is bad, but to inspire justice, people to take justice in their own hands and to inspire vigilantism is worse. What? People, like, I'm not being funny. Like, I like to inject humor in these reviews, but I'm being dead serious. When did we get so politically correct in this country that there is ever okay to feel sorry for a pedophile? I'm sorry, guys, but this is where I draw the line, and I feel very passionately, no, no, we, we do not have to have sympathy for a pedophile. If a person sexually abuses a child, if a person physically abuses this child, if a, per a person mentally messes with a child's head, then you you lose any sympathy card for me, boys and girls, you know, I, and I don't have any sympathy for a pedophile. You know, if you're a pedophile, out there, kill yourself, and I'm not being funny. Just go and fucking put the gun in your mouth and kill yourself and do the world a whole big favor. I don't care if you have a bad childhood. Whatever these excuses are, they're not going to fly with me because people have horrific childhoods. People have come from horrible things and still, despite all that, turn out to be good and decent human beings, guys. I do not think that, um, that, you know, yes, people have horrible things happening, but that doesn't defy who you are. You rise, if you're a decent, halfway decent human being, you rise above your cir your circumstances and you try to be better than maybe what you came from. So, uh, and I know some people are going to say, well, Jen, it has some wiring in their head. Maybe you do, but if you have the wrong wiring in your head, you know, that makes you want to sexually uh, do things to a child or physically hurt a child, then um, you, you just kill yourself. You, you just you just throw out that, you know? And I, I, I just... I I don't understand when I was reading these reviews I was like how can anyone have sympathy for someone who would hurt a child in any way shape or form I, I it's con it's almost like that my opinion is controversial where do we get in this country that it's controversial to, to you know where why is it bad to say you know if you're a pedophile kill yourself am I being too hard guys um, because these are my honest opinions I'm always trying to be honest with you guys and um, these reviews just blew me away um I, I just I'm a mother and I think that if you if you hurt a child in any way uh, no just bye bye uh, Dennis Miller said it best he actually in one of his old um, I think it was his black and white show he actually was talking about this that um, now I'm paraphrasing here but basically what the joke was he was saying you know if you have those impulses inside your head to hurt or do anything uh, physically or sexually with a child and your only two options are either to act out on those impulses or put a gun in your mouth um, uh, you know even though he was Catholic and you know it's a sin to take your own life um, he's pretty sure that if there's a just and loving God up there you know if you do the right thing and, and the right thing would be of course to kill yourself um, you know it, God would give you a high five and probably let you have the remote control and I, I kind of agree with him on that uh, you know I mean you, uh, you cut off your own hand rather than hurt a child is kind of my thing so but it was very interesting these the, the reviews on the online was just fascinating to me that anybody would have a sympathy for a fucking pedophile Jesus Christ and a lot of people also uh, when I was reading these reviews really didn't like Ellen Page they almost you know she's not a pedophile but they almost think she's worse because she does worse things than a pedophile and again I don't agree with this statement. I, I it just it just blows my mind, and I hope I'm not like I, I don't like to turn these into political or preachy things, guys. But I like to give you honest reviews, and these reviews just really piss me off because no, we should not have sympathy for a pedophile. Um, I just no, guys, no, 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 bad. I just that blew my mind. Y'all, you learn something every day, and it just really shocked me when I was doing research for this movie. But um, I can definitely recommend it. It's a, it's a good watch. Um, I don't think it's going to be two hours of your life you're wasted. Uh, so I strongly recommend uh, uh, Hard Candy. And with that, booze and ghouls, it comes a conclusion of another Jen's Reviews from the Grave. As always, I hope you guys feel like you've gotten your money's worth. I hope you enjoy the review. And with that, I'll talk to you. Uh, I hope I wish you guys a good day, a good evening, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.